Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and I want to thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel. This is the Getting Started with the SQL Server Import and Export Wizard video. I'm filming this because I've had quite a few people ask me how to get data in and out of SQL Server easily. Uh, I've, had, I've seen such a variety of ways. The most basic, obviously, is to run a query and then copy and paste results, which can be kind of problematic, especially if you need to do it more than once. A fairly creative way that I saw yesterday uh, somebody had a query, they put in a job, and then they had the results append to a text file, but it didn't have the delimiters that were there, uh, needed, and there was a uh, the job name was at the top of the file, so it wasn't really what he was looking for. SQL Server has this built in to the product. I'm going to be using SQL 2016 for this. It's actually, I'm using the developer edition, but it, it should be in the... Uh, developer standard enterprise. It might even be in, in the Express, but I'm not really sure on that. In any event, we're going to be using the Stack Overflow public data dump, which they make available to anybody. If you uh, if you go out to Brent Ozar's site, he's got a, a copy that you can just restore into SQL Server or attach, depending on how he's got it. Uh, it makes for really nice sample data. There's a number of tables in there. Users has got six and a half million records in it. Comments has got a whole bunch. Post has got a whole bunch, but this post types is what I'm going to focus on because it's just a very few rows and it'll go very quickly. When you're importing or exporting data, you're doing it this at the database level. You'll pick which table or tables you want as we go through the wizard. So you want to make sure you're not looking for where to start it at the up, up here at the instance level or down here at the post type or at the uh, table level. Start at the database level. Right click, go to tasks. And down here towards the bottom, you've got import data and export data. I'm going to do this in reverse order. I'm going to do export, and then I'm going to turn around and import that same data right back into a new table. So, here we go. This is, like all things, wizard. Nice little Microsoft wizard, and it starts off right off. I want you to choose the data source. Now, it just defaults to the first thing in the list here. That's why it went to .NET Framework. If you look in the list, you'll see that you can pull things in and out of Access, Excel, um, Oracle, a variety of things. Anything that you have the driver for on your system is going to show up in this list. When I'm just doing SQL Server to and from text files and CSVs, I tend to go with the native client, unless it doesn't work for some reason, and then I may back it off to the OLEDB for SQL Server. But, all right, I'm going to use standard Windows authentication. It's going to pick up my name and password, which of course is, I'm a sysadmin, so I can do this. Choose your database that you want to pick from. And you'll hit next. And the next thing is a destination. Because I just want to dump this out to a, a CSV or comma separated values file, that falls under flat file. Text files are the same way. SQL Server does things differently. That driver formats things differently based on what you've chosen. I've got to give it a file name. And I'm going to go to a predetermined folder that I'm going to put it right here. Notice there's nothing but folders and DLLs here. So I'm going to put that, and I should have put this in when I was browsing, but I should take it anyway. Uh, this is going to be a delimited file, and I'm not going to have single, you know, double quotes around the things or anything like that. And I do want column names in my resulting file. The next, and I have two choices here. We're going to do this one first: copy data from one or more tables. This is as basic as it gets. And it wants me to pick the table, so I'm going to pick post types. And this is where I can speci specify what do I want to be the delimiter. Now, a CSV file, by definition, is a comma. But I could put, use a, a vertical bar, or pipe, as everybody else calls it. Uh, I could use tabs. I could use anything, pretty much anything I want right there. But we're going to stick with comma. We preview the data. As you can see, there's only nine rows. Otherwise, it would have shown me, I believe, probably the top 200 if it was a bunch of rows, just so I can see that it's lining up properly. I hit Next, and we're almost done. All I have to do here is hit Run immediately, hit Next, and Finish, and it'll do it. If I wanted to save this and have it reusable, which is a little more advanced than I'm talking about today, it'll save it as an, as an SSIS package, and you can turn around and rerun that but you can't change anything. Once it's in as, as a package, you would have to rerun the wizard, create a new package. It's not worth the effort right now for this basics video. 
So we're going to hit next and we're going to hit finish and it's going to all be green because everything is lovely and I see that nine rows are transferred. So I'll go back over to my Windows Explorer. There's the file. It's going to take a hair longer than I would like for it to to come up, but it's going to bring up Excel because I've got that CSV mapped to Excel for applications. And there's the data. Now, yes, I could have just done a, you know, select star from table and done a copy and paste and it would have been a lot faster. But if it's a much bigger table or you need to rerun this at three o'clock in the morning, you know, because you need to schedule a job, there's a variety of reasons that you want to be able to use this wizard. All right. So as I said, the next thing I'm going to do is turn around and pull this data back in using the import functionality. All right, so this is all good. Uh, if one of these had failed, you would have gotten a hyperlinked reason, and some of those reasons are very clear, some of them are very not clear. So, back to the database level, tasks, import data, and basically we're just going to reverse the strings, if you will. This is going to be the data source, is that same flat file source, and browse out to... I, this catches me all the time, and it really shouldn't after all these years. Default to text, I'm looking for a CSV. There it is. Somebody needs to boot me on the head. And this should work for everything I'm doing. If I hit preview here, I can see those same nine rows. And now my destination, is again, SQL Server, Server Native Client, Stack Overflow Database, all the same stuff. But in this case, I'm going to call it I'm going to send it to a new table that's not already there, so it's going to create a table and then fill it. And I call it post types imported, so I'll be able to differentiate between the two. Hit the edit mappings button just so you can look at it and go, ah, oh, okay, the ID is coming in as a varchar. Hmm, I think I might want that to be. Well, I'm just going to type it there. <laughs> I want that to be an int, so I can change what it's picking up by default and make it something else. If I want to def, you know, define this as a certain length other than 50 of varchar for the type, I can do that as well. It's going to create this destination table. If this table, the post types imported, was already there, I could have it delete the rows and pull in new ones, which can certainly be useful. I can have it just add to the table, which is even more useful. I'm getting a like yesterday's data and I want to put it on that table. Or I can have it drop and completely recreate if it was already there. In this case, I can't do that because it's not there. But hit OK. Review it again just for fun. Hit Close. And this is where we cross our fingers and hope everything worked. All right, this should still work. It's giving me an error because it's coming in. It's a string, and I'm telling it to be an, ID or an int integer field. And I'm going to run it immediately. Across everything you've got two of, and nine rows are transferred. We'll close that out. We'll go over here back to SQL Server Management Studio, refresh, and I have a post types imported table. Select the top ten rows because I know there's only nine, and they're all there. So it can be as simple as that, or it can be very complex. If you need to do a lot of transformations to the data, you probably don't want to use the wizard. You want to go ahead and break out Visual Studio and to start working on a proper SSIS package, especially if you want to do some multi-threading or sending the results off to an FTP server or making everything uppercase, which is kind of funny because Stack Overflow is case sensitive when it comes to you. But that's the basics. Just the key thing to remember when you go looking for this six months from now, right click at the database level, tasks, import and export. And when you go to import data, make sure if it's a CSV file that you actually flip that uh, file types thing like I did from text over to CSV. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love for you to, to put them in the comments on this video. Of course, you can send me information or requests for additional assistance on this specifically to Kevin at DallasDBAs.com or to my Twitter handle at Kevin3NF. Please, 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 if you've got a production server down or this is an emergency and your boss is standing behind you, you know, tapping his foot and wondering, don't use Twitter comments for that. If you've got something that important, call Microsoft or engage somebody that, you know, that already has experience with this and can spend the time with you. But if you just have a quick question, great.
Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.